Hello everyone, Morgan Hibbs here with Lynn County Farm Bureau. I'm so excited to be visiting you for our November lesson. Today we are going to do a fun lesson called Little Red Hen Bakes a Cake. We are looking at the process of growing wheat and turning it into delicious things we like to eat like cake, donuts, pastries, cookies, cereal, uh, we use it to make uh, flour for tortillas, it's in lots of chips, uh, and wheat is used to make bread. And we are going to learn about the process from uh, the farm all the way to our favorite foods. So here I have a stalk of wheat. Wheat, we don't grow a lot of wheat here in Iowa, but we do grow lots of wheat out west in the western part of the United States. Kansas, and Nebraska, uh, North and South Dakota, uh, Montana, those are some places that grow lots of wheat. Now wheat is a type of grass that grows on a stalk and it has seeds. The seeds are what we harvest. The seeds inside of this head of wheat are called kernels. The story for today is called The Little Red Hen. And if you have not read the story or watched the read aloud video, I encourage you to pause this video now, go and do that and come back and resume play. Okay, now that you've listened to the story, you read about the life cycle of a wheat plant and how it grows, but we also learned about how to process the wheat so that we can make bread and cereals and things that we enjoy every day. So if you think back to the book, what was the first stage in making the cake? What did the little red hen do? The very first thing she did was she grew the wheat. So she planted seeds. She gave the wheat the things that it needs, the grain and the soil, the sunlight. Once the wheat was grown, did she harvest it when it was green or when it was brown? She harvested the wheat when it was brown, when it started to mature or reach the end of its life cycle. So this wheat stalk is at the end of its life cycle. It is dry, it's brown, uh, and you can tell there's no more moisture in this plant. Okay, the next thing I would like us to do is to thresh the wheat. You have a worksheet here called How to Do It. And it goes through the steps of how to thresh the seeds or the kernels from the wheat head. So inside your kit, you have wheat heads. You can have partners work on this together. And you can do this individually. You can do one class in, uh, underneath a document camera, one classroom uh, example. So it's totally up to you. But it says on this worksheet, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to place your hands around the seed head and you're going to move them back and forth like if you are trying to get your hands warm. So you're going to, and it might be best to do this over a plate or a napkin. So you're going to just move your hand, hands back and forth, taking the hole, we call it, H-U-L-L, -L, which is kind of like a shell from the kernels. So once you have the seeds, let's see if I can bring this up here so you can see it. They should be like this where there are lots of little pieces. And there might be a, a fine paper around the seeds that you might still have to pick off. But if you thresh the seeds well enough, then the, the shell should come off. But inside of that paper shell is the kernel. The kernel is what we harvest and make into bread and flour. So here's a bag of wheat seeds that have been harvested. Count to see how many seeds you can get from your stock, from your head of wheat and see if it compares to the others in the class. You'll notice that not every wheat, uh, head of wheat has the same amount of kernels in them. They all vary in the amount of seeds that they carry. Okay, so once we have the seeds harvested, what's the next task? To take it to the mill so it can be ground into flour. 
So I'm going to show you, I have a grinder here. Okay, so here I have a wheat grinder. You can also grind other seeds in here, but today we are going to grind wheat. So I'm going to put the wheat of just a little bit into the top of here. Now you don't have this step in your class, but I will show you a sample when we're done. So then I'm going to just grind and crank the handle. And you can see flour is being made. Now this is whole wheat flour. This is the truest form of flour. You can process flour so that it is enriched. And that's what we call white flour, which just has less of the germ in it, which is in the center of the kernel. Now, how long do you think it would take for me to produce enough wheat to make uh, the cake. So here we've been uh, grinding for a few minutes and we have probably two tablespoons of flour. A cake usually takes a couple cups of flour. So imagine how long it would take if I had to thresh the seeds, put them in a grinder and grind it up. It would take a really long time. But now we have flour to make our cake. Okay, so now that we've been able to see the process from the seed all the way to wheat, we have in your kit, you should have a small sample of flour. Uh, this is whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour does contain the most nutrients uh, and is a little bit more nutrient dense than white flour. Okay, so that took a little while to make flour. So that's why it's so great that we have uh, mills and factories that are grinding the flour for us with big machines, not hand cranking machines. And then also, it took a little bit to harvest the wheat by hand, which is how we used to harvest wheat, uh, until the combine was created. There is a video available on our website, lincoag.com. Here is a picture that you also have available to you, and it talks about the different parts of a combine. Uh, you also have a cake recipe to send home to the families. Uh, and if you are a homeschool family, then you have a, a cake recipe to follow up with this lesson. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning how wheat is harvested and processed. And I will see you next time.